Ada from astrolada.com and today I'm here with my friend and colleague, trainer in consciousness and manifestation, Zorina, the owner of Kill and Learn. Hello, Zori. Hi, Lada. Good to be with you. Happy to see you again. <laughs> Me too. I, I love our conversations and always the interesting knowledge that you bring. And today Zori wants to present to us how what we call mysticism and what was called mysticism in the past is actually coming more and more into the scientific sphere and how what we call mysticism is actually a practical guide for raising of consciousness and success, external and internal success in our lives. So Zori, I'm curious what new information we have for us. <laughs> right. Well, if you remember, Lada, we started first speaking on your channel about creating business with meaning, living life with meaning. Uh, then it turned out that people were very interested in the silver method, which I also train or a variation of the silver method. Um, and mostly they were interested in manifestation. And when I teach manifestation, I get a lot of questions of why things don't work sometimes. And the most recent one, eventually they do work, though, when people understand the principles and the framework behind. But there was somebody who recently asked me, I've done all the possible um, techniques, tools online, not only from the silver method, but it seems that things are getting worse. Like I'm trying to manifest money, it's getting worse. And I advised her to simply disengage, stop doing whatever she was doing, all the techniques, all the, um, the, the methods, and to engage in something completely different, something creative, something that engages her mind completely and genuinely. Mm -hmm. So she started doing that. And I think two days later, she wrote under one of my YouTube videos, she said this works like a clock. So basically, she immediately started getting money when she dis disengaged. It is because, and you see, this is neither a tool, nor a method, nor a principle, nor it is a universal ethical rule. She followed all of these and still it didn't work, right? But these are... Um, parts of, a, of, a, of an overall framework, understanding of the world that we need to have in order to manifest and to create whatever, whatever, we, whatever our heart desires in a way. Although we have to be careful also with whatever our heart desires because sometimes people confuse desires with heart desires and it comes from a different place. Right, so... So, how, so let me ask you something. Yeah. It means, I also remember Abraham Hicks, they talk about that. So you're doing the manifestation methods you're doing, but if you're too focused on them all the time, you're also blocking the flow because you're like, when is it coming? When is it coming? And uh, so basically the, the, the principle is, yes, you do this, this manifestation work, and then you, you, uh, you have to disengage and, and enter into something that your energy flows. So you open this vortex of flowing. So the things that you program for yourself can start also flowing, but you have to remove your mind from them. Is that what you're describing? Yes. I um, Actually, I, I was thinking yesterday about a, a song from Whitney Houston called uh, One Moment in Time. And I have, I have the lyrics here that I wanted to quote. These are, I've laid the plans, now lay the chance here in my hands. So that means I have laid my plans. I have made, I've done what I needed to do. Now it's your turn, divine consciousness. Now you give it to me. But how do you give it to me? You give it to me by me believing in what I've done. This is number one, that what I've done really works. Number two, I believe that uh, the principles, that this generally works. And then I believe that the divine consciousness is capable of doing that. Right. So the belief has many layers, but in general, we call it belief. Right. So these are all um, parts of this framework that I teach in my method, the heal and learn method. But people generally consider them as unproven, as scientific, scientifically invalid. But they don't know that there's actually a lot of research behind um intuitive abilities, the power of the mind behind consciousness. And, you know, the, the people that do research in these spheres, you can count them on, count them on your hand, on, on one hand. They're very few. So most people know Joe Dispenser, Greg Braden. They've done some research. And when I mean research, I mean 
primary research, when they actually take people and ask them to do certain things, to influence certain things. Um, there's Rupert Sheldrake, who talks about morphogenic fields. I'm going to talk about this in a bit. Um, Jose Silva, of course, he's one of the pioneers. He's done a lot of his primary research on telepathy, on um, what intuition is, um, the, Situation programming is what he calls manifestation. So on situation programming and success, the relation between these two. Who else? There's uh, Amit. Uh, I can't remember his family name. Um, he talks about quantum physics. Amit um, Gotswami. Amit Gotswami. He talks about con uh, quantum physics and consciousness. So there are really very few people that talk about the scientific um, the proof behind and the reason I call it scientific is because it is actually replicable mm -hmm. they do the studies it, it's not a coincidence right they do the studies all, all over and over again and they prove the same thing so one of the one of the interesting uh, studies done by Jose Silva uh, was I think we talked about it in the summer and you found it interesting, so I thought I'd share it with your audience too. Mm -hmm. So one of the uh, the studies that they did in the 70s was with 40 groups of executives in the US. They studied their success. They measured the success of their profit, the profit. Hello? And they asked, they separated them in groups of 12. So 40 groupers, can you, can you hear me? Oh, it stopped for a second, but I can now. Fort, yes, okay. My microphone is on, should be okay. <laughs> 40 groups of executives. Um, and so, and they were asked to guess numbers from one to 100, 10 numbers. Uh, sorry, not 10 numbers. They were asked to guess numbers from one to 100, the position. For example, um, I want to know the position of, of or rather, the number on the 13th position. And if they mm -hmm. were able to guess that this is, let's say six, then it was a tick they guessed. And so the ones that guessed more than 12 times on average, they had managed to improve the bottom line result of their companies by 50% in the previous five years. The ones that didn't guess, they were either not able to uh, or the ones that were able to guess on average of nine times and below, they were not able to increase the profit of their company in the previous five years or even decreased it. Mm -hmm. And so the interesting thing was, and the ones that had uh, guessed more than 14 times, so the position of the cipher in a, in a range of 100, when they guessed it more than 14 times, they had actually managed to double the revenues in the previous five years. So there was a direct correlation between success and their intuitive abilities. Wow. But listen to this now. Yeah, listen to this. This is super interesting. The numbers were generated only after the executives had, had given their guesses. Mm -hmm. So this means they actually programmed the situation. It was not that they had intuitive abilities. We call them intuition. But these were abilities of situation programming. And this is what Jose Silva actually teaches in, in his techniques, mind and situation programming. It's, we call it now manifestation or the commercial uh, terminology that is used uh, <coughs> by new age and so on. This is how most people know it, manifest money and manifest all of that. But it's, it's, it's such a small portion of the entire field of knowledge that we called mind, mind and situation programming and working with the field, working with consciousness. But for the sake of um, ease, we call it manifestation. Okay, so this was one of the one of the researches that was done on programming and on the ability of people. These were natural skills, by the way, the natural skills of people to program the field mm -hmm. linked directly to their success. And this is what mm -hmm. you can learn. Right? Mm -hmm. So it's not like there was like psychic or something. They they, they just have stronger ability to focus their energy and manifest in advance and to program the field and, and to get the results that they want, basically. Exactly, because it looked like intuition, but, but the 
range of 100 numbers was given afterwards. Yeah. Wow. After the, so they they, they influence they, they actually, influence the field. Mm -hmm. So what yeah. is necessary for that to have more self belief from repeated successes? Maybe because they've been so successful already. <laughs> That's why they were, they also felt confident that whatever they visualize would come. Well, 10% of all people are born naturally operating in alpha more often than the other people. And these people are in general more successful. So in a way you're born like that. The ones that are born like that are by default more successful, but you can learn that. So the reason why I'm stating 10% is also because this was measured by um, electro... Uh, magnetic uh, ECG is it called ECG? Yeah, that measures the brain waves, mm -hmm. electromagnetic ECG. Yeah, and um, so it's known that on average, measured by random people, one in ten operates naturally in alpha. So they they operate from the central uh, or the the central point of your brain is activated, but this doesn't mean that your brain is the one creating. Mm -hmm. Your mind is not in your brain, but this is what is activated when you're creating this, mm -hmm. when you're programming a certain situation or when you're discovering information. Because by the way, discovery of information also has to do with programming. I have other cases, but this is going to become too, too long to, to talk about it because just as a simple example, even those dowsing sticks that people discover oil with or water with, this mm -hmm. is also linked to programming rather than with intuition it's it's interesting the science of consciousness is really the science of possibilities of, and of quantum physics it's not mm -hmm. as simple as we think uh, you know the, the 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 laws of causation and um and outcome are not are not as simple as we think mm -hmm. they are we mm -hmm. do something and that results in something else because sometimes we manifest in advance. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let, let me continue now. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yes. Yes. I understand what you're saying. Like with this example that you gave. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So that's one thing. And um, so, but, but how do you actually manifest? Is it with your mind? How do you create? How do you imprint certain information or images onto the field? Mm -hmm. how? that's very interesting so how okay we can we and and here i have an example with uh telepathy telepathy was studied only recently so the first information that i have that that really included a large group of people was from jose silva and telepathy but larger groups of people were only studied by an institution at the beginning of the 90s, in 92. So really, really recently. So, but Jose Silva studied telepathy uh, within Faraday cages. So he put two people in Faraday cages. And this is a, a place you can imagine as if you're wrapped in aluminum foil that doesn't allow any waves, any external electromagnetic fields to come in. So he had two people go in alpha, one in a Faraday cage and the other one not. And they were able to convey telepathic messages to each other. This was measured, not once. Mm -hmm. As I said, these are actual studies with primary research studies. Um, and so this means that telepathy is not a wave. It's not a function mm -hmm. of a wave. It occurs simultaneously. Wow. So it, it can occur at any point in time and and at any part of the world it just occurs simultaneously it's not conveyed through a field through a wave mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. okay so how is it conveyed once upon a time there was this element ether in the mm -hmm. table of in the periodic table that was allegedly taken out and this ether is abbreviated by e if we think about emotion, the etymology of the word ether, motion, emotion, you're moving the ether, you're making it do something. So you're imprinting information on the field with your emotions. Uh, 
Yes. Okay, so the emotions is the primary well, way to program the field and uh, to influence outcomes the way you want them. Yes, mm, this is, I think, a misconception that happened with the law of attraction and also a little bit with the silver method. The focus was too much on the mind, on how you visualize, and that's a big part of it. But to make it work, to put it in motion, you have to work, use emotions. Mm, that's what yes. I do either, okay <laughs> well I, i've even heard of telepathy that happens between person that lives in our time and someone who's died um, not in the other side someone who lived before and they catch their thoughts i've read books about that where someone is in their time say born in 1523 and someone in our time, because the times, they, they always exist in some field <laughs> somewhere. If someone is picking up the thoughts of someone from the past and they start te tele um, telepathy. Uh, it was in the book of Dolores Cannon uh, with um, Nostradamus. And from the year 15 something, he was uh, talking to her. And in his own body, and she was catching up his thoughts. So... It's obviously some material, like you say, ether or ether that is not determined on time, space. It's, it can happen at any time and at any space and any distance. But that's interesting that only emotions is the primary, primary tool. Yeah, with, your, with consciousness and with the silver method, you can actually uh, connect to any consciousness in any point in time. And you can in a way, channel information. It doesn't mean that you're channeling an entity or somebody's going to come through you and speak to with a different voice, but you can channel this information if you connect to it with the, with the pure intention of um, doing something for the benefit. Because and this is one of, the, one of the things in the framework that I've previously spoken to. Uh, when you, whenever you engage with your subconscious mind, you cannot do that with ill-meaning or with um, egocentrical desires because it's going to backfire. In order for it to work, you have to let the door open of a flow to come into you. And the way to open the door, a flow of goodness to come into you is if you give goodness yourself. So if you're working for the benefit of the world, society, somebody else, if you're healing somebody, if you are... Um, if you are, yeah, basically working to improve something or, or if you want to, generally speaking, express your God-given gifts and abilities mm -hmm. and then you're still giving. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Then it's benefiting at least one other person, I remember you saying. <laughs> it's benefiting, yeah, these are the principles. The, the principles of manifestation with the civil method are how to, but there are other points of the, of the framework. One of them um, is, for example, certain activities uh, include, and, and bodily activities and actions that you take with your body that can improve the, uh, the effectiveness of manifestation because, you know, it's all connected. So everything is contained into something else. Um, for example, the meaning of love can be given to a rose. It's all about the meanings we attach to certain things. This is where the study of morphogenic fields com comes in, for example. And morphogenic fields were first studied by uh, Rupert Sheldrake. And he states that, um, let me first tell you how he discovered this in a way. I think I may have spoken about this. I'm gonna be brief just for, to let people know what this is all about. Um, there were groups of mice, one in the US, the other one in Australia, and they were supposed to go through the same labyrinth, mm -hmm. one in the US, the other ones in Australia. The ones that uh, went through the maze in the US were measured to take the first time 30 minutes. And with each consecutive time, they improved the time of passage from mm -hmm. one end to the other of the labyrinth. The ones in Australia, when they were eventually um, tested to do the same thing, going through the same type of maze, they managed to get there already with the improved timing. 
Oh, so wow. this means within five minutes or however much the timing was improved, it didn't take them 30 minutes. The information was already recorded in the field. And this means that certain species or groups of people either linked by belonging, beliefs, let's say Christians, Muslim, uh, they're subject to the same uh, information, vibration on, on certain levels. There are groups of people subjected to the same information. Like the collective consciousness that the they collective. Have into, yeah, especially if they if they focus their attention to a similar subject. Yes. So let's say if, if I take you as an example, you will experience similar things to Bulgarians in general, as you're Bulgarian. You will experience things to people. Uh, similar things to people who are married to Americans, because <laughs> <laughs> that's your case. You will experience certain things that are privy to astrologers or things that are privy to people that have open consciousness. So mm -hmm. there are layers that Rupert Sheldrake calls morphogenic fields, and they influence as information, giving information to, to the same type, type of people. So the more a spiritual group of people is developing, the more each member is sourcing from this development and information. And it's best to work in groups. That's why you always, Zori always organize every month a group that she works with to manifest together. So it's much more powerful. Yeah, this is one thing, but uh, uh, yes, exactly. Uh, it's much more powerful when it's in a group, but yeah, because there's also the collective learning, not only the, the collective influence but also the collective learning from a certain concept even in, uh, even improvement in vibration we are subjected to this if you think about the um, um the cycles you recently posted a video on cycles that i had watched some years ago you reposted it on your other channels yeah, yeah the cycles the kali yuga the vapara yuga yeah yeah this is the ups and downs it's um we are all subjected as a group of people to these cycles, mm -hmm. but also their individual cycles, group cycles, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and sometimes when people get caught up on timing and why something doesn't work right now, well, maybe you're in a cycle that doesn't allow you to, mm -hmm. to move upwards. And we we also have, need to have knowledge. This is the third pillar of the framework. We need to understand how our world works. What is the basic structure? We don't need to know all the details in order to manifest, but you need to know a bit about magnetism, a, need, a bit about the energy construction of the world, how something interacts with something else. These are basic points, principles that we need to know in order to maneuver well. And so when you're going down in a cycle, mm -hmm. what does that mean? It doesn't mean that you're going to pump up the manifestation. No, it means that you're up for a change and your mindset should be now something better is coming. Mm -hmm. You know, something is breaking so that I can achieve something better when you're in a downward cycle. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Rather than why is my manifestation not coming? Maybe that's gross part of the process of manifestation <laughs> but I, I love what you said for the morphogenic field that reminds me of like when uh someone sport, sports people no one could run 100 meters in how many seconds was it and then someone does it in the 60s and after that everyone is doing it <laughs> like once you break that like those pioneers that they break through then after that, more and more people can do it. So I'm very hopeful for humanity because of that. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, the world record has improved, I think, on 100 meters by 14 seconds since the, the 60s, what you're wow. saying. Yes, it is, it all the time. Yeah, exponentially improving. So there's really group learning. Wow. <laughs> and, and when you said, uh, you know, now talking about the physical, uh, the power of, of the mind or of this field is so strong that it is measured that you can achieve similar results without training, only visualizing in your mind. This is what the top uh, sports sportsmen do anyhow. They visualize a lot before they 
perform the actual physical activity. So if you only, vis that's also a study, by the way, if you only visualize and if you only train, you achieve the same result with 1% difference. Really? In favor, in favor of physical action. Yes, 1%. So difference. I can sit at home and develop apps and a six pack. <laughs> yes. Just by, uh, just by imagining with emotion <laughs> yes <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> yeah so the the only way to really improve is to do both both visualization and physical activity and this is when the results show to be much better otherwise it's the same whether you only visualize or only uh, do physical activity is the same it's with the same speed you mean but if you do both it's well, it, it makes sense because many times someone decides like, okay, I want to have the perfect body. They visualize that for a long time and then they start doing it. So many times people do it naturally. Uh, they, they imagine it and they start doing the physical action. So uh, it's, I, I think uh, most people do manifestation. All people do manifestation without realizing it. <laughs> it's just the point is here to not to do the negative manifestations as well. <laughs> mm hmm and, and also to consciously yeah and also to disassociate the word manifestation from uh, mysticism that we don't understand because there are logical explanations about it there are ways we know how things work energetically in terms of quantum physics also so i think we are slowly starting to move away from the mystic and magic association of manifestation towards a more scientific when i say scientific i don't mean cold scientific and uh, controlled scientific i mean a way that people can logically understand well that's what the age of aquarius is supposed to do the age of pisces was believing without proof and that's what the mystics did and the age of aquarius which we're slowly entering it's all about taking those mysteries of the past and explaining them logically. And then, and then you don't even need faith. Just like, do you need to believe that uh, an aspirin will help your head, headache go away? You don't believe it, you know it. <laughs> so it's more about knowing than believing. And that's what, what you're talking about is happening now uh, through scientific control and whatever examples that at one point, humans will not just say, oh, I believe in manifestation. And I, I know it. It's proof like science is proof. <laughs> so I, uh, that's when, when it's not even belief what you were talking about. You have to believe it. You know it now. Exactly. And yeah. it will work way more powerfully. And can you give me an example about emotion? How to put emotion in something? Let's say you're... Um, I don't know what something someone wants how how to infuse it with emotion it's like to become emotional about it or <laughs> <laughs> uh, i think everybody kind of knows what they want to what it feels like to be inspired what it feels like to depending on what emotion you want to recall you can either source it from a previous experience that you've had for example, the feeling of being in love or the feeling of achieving something, uh, winning something, getting some success in something. You can always source this emotion and in a way copy paste it. Uh, it sounds very simple and it is not difficult. The only thing you need to do is be in a relaxed state of mind and know a few tools, know how things work. But you can copy paste a certain emotion if you're that unable to, to generate it yourself. But usually... It goes through something, through a reference point, something that we've already created. Mm -hmm. And uh, something that we've already created is uh, the past, past experiences. So the easiest thing is to just remember. Mm -hmm. Remember the last time you felt like this and then work with your imagination to enhance it. Yeah. Well, that, that's why it's probably people that have uh, constant, have been, been on a stream of successes, for example, it's much easier for them to manifest because this feeling is so familiar and close to them or someone who has never been loved unconditionally. It might be so hard for them to manifest love because they, they don't even have a reference point, but they might have it from an animal, for example, from the smallest, but someone who's consistently had 
great relationships. So or recently had a lot of successes. It's much more easier. That's why the momentum, like those, like you gave examples of those bosses, that the ones that were most successful, they were able to program the field. Most successful recently, they were most able to program the field because they feel this feeling of, of I got it right. I know it. Exactly. Yeah, I, know I know it. it. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. So that, that it do it does show that manifestation becomes much, much easier with repeated successes. Mm -hmm. And uh, maybe the most difficult thing is the first breakthrough to experience something that you program that you you haven't experienced much or have you don't you don't have you have a very little reference point uh, emotionally because you can't infuse this emotion into the uh, the fullness of that emotion. But maybe start with small little things and then grows and grows. That's a lot of consistency. <laughs> it's a lot of consistency, I know. But it's like learning everything. You have to go through steps and bit by bit increase the intensity, increase the effect. Because, you know, most people say, fine, I'm able to manifest small things, but I'm not able to manifest anything grand. But it's, yeah. it's like when, when you stop That's yourself true. there and you say, I'm not able to, you're closing the door rather than... yeah. Uh, taking it from there and repeating it with a bit bigger effect and again and again replicating. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I, I just remember when I first started my business in astrology and every little thing, because I, I, I'm a big dreamer. I, I didn't know that's called manifesting. I would just sit and daydream at home what I want. Like oh, Every time I travel somewhere, I have two hours, I... I wouldn't read or watch my phone. I just watched through the window and I imagine what it feels like. I just loved that that going into that world of what it will feel like if I had it. And, and at the beginning, it was so much effort manifesting the smallest thing. And, and now the smallest effort I make, because I make it with so much confidence and because I'm so used to successes, that it takes me so little <laughs> visualization <laughs> because the, the, the belief behind it is so strong now, but it was so little 10 years ago, 12 years. And now it's from here, it's grown that much and it's so easy. <laughs> like It's like the middle gold touch sometimes that you have, you know, and, and if, even if, if I do something that is not successful, I'm like, oh, it's temporary. <laughs> it's a cycle. It will come back. I've done it before. I'll do it again. So that's how it, yeah, it, you just have to be consistent. It's like trying to do it uh, for two, three days <laughs> and saying, oh, it's not working. It's not going to give the results, I guess. How long have you been working with those methods? Like uh, working myself, practicing myself. I've been practicing the silver method since 2005 or 2006. Oh, wow. And it's brought me a lot like everything I really wanted uh, but it depends what you want I mean people want different things and everybody has a different expectation of what you need to have achieved but the things that I've wanted until now I have managed to achieve them you um, need to have and, a very strong desire behind something to be consistent if you don't have a strong desire you actually don't really want it it's, it's not yes. like such a soul desire you said uh, hard desire it's more like an external oh because my friend has it or oh, because oh I saw this meme and maybe I want the same thing you know uh, but the true soul desire is burning you 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 want it consistently for years until you make it happen <laughs> the true soul desire actually comes from the desire to give if you think about it it's not something that you want to receive but you have so much of something that you want to give it to the world that's, that's how you will make the discernment between desires and soul desires. If you have a soul desire, you want something because you want to give something. You want something to happen, not because you want something to have it. or mm -hmm. Right? So it's like, just like a woman who wants a child, uh, who wants it from a soul desire, is because she really wants to put in a lot into this child and, and raise him with whatever principles and rather than oh i need a companion so i don't die alone <laughs> so i want to watch yeah. <laughs> okay i see yeah yeah that makes a lot of yeah, sense but that's a very good example that's a very good example of a child so when you want a child that's that's the perfect example of manifestation of creation mm -hmm. when a child comes it comes out of you mm -hmm. right it's mm -hmm. like it's the example that you gave of why you don't want a child just to give you something to fill you in 
but the real creation is it, it's coming out of you. You're mm -hmm. continuing the thread. So the same with the partner. I want a partner mm -hmm. also not so, of life. so I can so have someone like take care of me, provide for me. I want a partner because I have so much love to give. I want to share those precious moments like with them rather than what I can. Okay, I'm I'm getting it. I'm liking that. <laughs> Well, the, there's something very interesting that I, uh, another a video that I watched recently uh, talking about partners and something that I, that I, that resonated with me was uh, the presenter was saying, if you want certain qualities of a partner, make sure, make sure that you have them first, because if you want a partner that is, let's say, super rich or super successful, are you yourself rich and successful? Because otherwise you're going to get some skewed version of what you want. Yeah. So you need to you need to generate these feelings inside of you first before you can attract. But I don't person. want the same partner like me. <laughs> if, when, if we both have the same, <laughs> some, isn't it? Sometimes you attract a partner that has things that you you aspire towards, but you still don't have them. You don't need to have them. It's the internal feeling. Mm -hmm. You feel worthy in this sense. Mm -hmm. You don't feel unworthy and empty mm -hmm. in the sense of the, the qualities that you want from them. So, if, for example, if you want somebody who's very handsome and you feel ugly, you're not going to attract somebody handsome. Oh, of course. Yeah, for sure. All yeah. right. It's the internal feeling. Yeah. It's the so, internal feeling. Mm -hmm. So you, you, do, you still do groups? Are you doing a group soon again on... Manifest. Yes, I am doing one, uh, the Heal and Learn method, um, next week on Saturday, and um, Saturday. but I also have individual one-on-one -on -one sessions. If uh, on Saturday, the seventh um, of October, you're starting a group. The eighth of October. So that's okay. So if 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 any of you wants to work in a group environment, which is the fastest manifestation, as we have seen. Uh, because everyone enhances the field of the other and everyone works on the other people's desire, isn't it? That's right. Everyone works on the other people's. Yeah, we all see and program the same things. Sometimes they appear as if they're independent, not related to our... Um, as if we're receiving them as a message, so to say. But in the end, our create uh, collective consciousness holds it as an image, mm -hmm. and it just brings it forth. And it's very, it's very interesting. It's it's interesting how it works. It's uh, people think that it's that these are just tools, ringing bells, and you know, <laughs> do, doing things that um, I'm going to do A and I'm going to get B. It's not that straightforward. It can be, but it would be the beginner's luck. The more you understand, the deeper you go, you need to see a fuller picture of what reality is, what consciousness is, how you create. And it was funny, you were telling me that often the groups that you form, many times the people are connected without knowing each other. They subscribe to get this course, which is like a few weeks, and they usually have the same issues. And then yes, that's very new. often. It's again the synchronicity of the morphogenetic field that's working to attract people of similar interests and of similar needs and desires to work together on them. So that's fascinating again. Yeah. Yeah. So, so if anyone that's wants to works. be part of this group, we'll have a one on one uh, sessions with you where you help them, uh, uh, you only, if you help them find out what they, they're very good at helping people find out what their career is. And work together with the person, not yourself, but <laughs> the person reaches to the state to understand the heart desire. Uh, or, or you can work in a group, which is probably a very powerful experience as well. And I'll put the link below for Zori's website if you're interested to contact her, if you're interested to uh, be part of this group or just speak with her personally. 
I personally would meet every <laughs> year. <laughs> <We got it. laughs> uh, thank you, Lada. But it's it's not just the manifestation techniques that you will learn. I mean, in the, in these groups, we learn also healing, talking, receiving information, synchronicities, understanding dreams, programming dreams. Um, we learn to discover information that is not subject to our physical senses. These are all not woo. These are studied, documented things with proven results, and they exist. Um, the, the reason why you're not hearing a lot is probably because nobody has interest to give you this information of your own abilities. Oh, yeah. Uh, and, and the other thing I wanted to, to just briefly mention about um, if anybody wants to work with me one on one is that I teach not only the silver method and how to do manifestation, but I also help people discover meaning, purpose, you actually create it, you don't discover it. It's mm -hmm. a two-way process. Yeah, wonderful. Inspiration. <laughs> Thank you so much, Zori. Have a wonderful week. Uh, and anyone who is interested, I'm putting a link below. Thank you for watching us. And write your comments uh, um, and impressions of these conversations. And I hope to see you soon again, Zori. Thank you, Lada. Bye. 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 Bye.